Hey, what's going on guys? Kel Mark with the easiestbusiness.com. Today I want to bring you a video, a very short video at that. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of something that I've never talked about on this channel before, and that's going to be a schedule of values. Um, I've never mentioned it in any of the videos that I've ever done before on this channel, as far as I'm aware. And that thought just came to me. I was just sitting around the other day. Schedule of values is probably something uh, that if you heard, unless you've done commercial work before, you have no idea what it means or what it's for. So I'm going to jump into that. This is going to be part one of a two part series. This is going to be a very short part. The second part of the series will be a little bit longer in which we'll go over an actual schedule of values. And I'll show you exactly how to make one, um, even though it could differ a little bit based on whatever GC you work for and how much information they actually require you to put on the schedule of values. But I will show you the general idea and how to make a general schedule of values. So let's get right into it. What is a schedule of values? So uh, a schedule of values is basically just a list of work performed and their value relating to the amount of the original accepted contract that work is. <clears throat> so a schedule of values is very important, especially on bigger projects, uh, both for the general contractor and the subcontractor. So uh, this is based around billing and the percentage of work that's complete, uh, mainly used on larger projects, like I've already said, uh, especially like multi-month projects. You're usually not gonna have to submit a schedule of values on something that's like two week project, you know, that's just too short for them to worry about. Um, but multi-month projects have invoice due dates that are typically paid at a later date, depending on your agreement with the contractor. Uh, so the payment amount that's received, uh, is basically based off of the schedule of values that are given by the subcontractor and approved by the general contractor. So whatever you submit, uh, whatever percentage, let's say you've, you finished 20% of the work and you bill off your schedule of values to so say, I finished the walls here and the trim here, but I still have the rest of the job and that's half the job. Uh, they'll pay you that 50% based on that schedule of values, whatever total that is uh, relative to the original contract amount. And this will make more sense on the next slide. So what is on a schedule of values uh, for painting contractors, which is mainly who I deal with. It's a, it's usually just a simple breakdown of labor and material, right? And, and it, and it deals with all painted substrates uh, on the contract. So for example, if you're painting walls, doors, and trim, you're going to have a labor and material breakdown for just walls, a labor and material breakdown for just trim and a labor and material breakdown for just doors. So if you go in and you do all the walls and it's time to put in uh, you know, an invoice uh, for a bill to the general contractor, then you're going to need to bill for the portion, just the wall portion. You won't build bill for the doors and the trim portion yet because you haven't done it yet. And so uh, usually they're all a separate breakdown, uh, but further breakdowns than that could be requested by certain contractors uh, to meet company policy all depends on what GC you work for, because every GC is different. Every GC requires different information on their schedule of values, company policy, things like that dictated. So, um, but one example I can give you is maybe if you're doing a big, large multi-story building and you're painting walls, doors, and trim <clears throat> on five floors, they may want a walls, doors, trim breakdown for every single floor. So you're literally going to have to reverse engineer your bid. And maybe if you have, and these don't always have to be hundred percent accurate, right? Like they just have to total the contract amount and you'll see in part two, what I'm talking about by that. So if we have three floors, you have 30,000 square feet of walls, obviously just build the walls by 10,000 square feet of floor, uh, divide it, your wall square footage by three, put a price on each one and there's your wall number for every single floor. Um, but if you have like a lobby and then you have, you know, floor two of a hotel or something that's like guest rooms and stuff that weren't on floor one, you're going to have different numbers. I would just take the wall square footage numbers and do like percentages. Like do I had five floors, you know, five times 20 is a hundred. So 20% on each floor. And then if floor one smaller, I may do 15% and take that uh, extra 5% and put another percent and make the other ones 21% that equal a hundred percent of the walls, if that makes sense. Um, but they, they, they may make you break it out by floor, depending on the general contractor. So you may have to do uh, floor one walls, doors, trim, labor material for all three floor two walls, doors, trim, labor material for all three. So it can get pretty tedious, especially if you're doing like a 15, 20 story building and you know, they want you to break down every single floor like that. Um, it can take a while to actually put all the information in and make sure you have all your math and then. Uh, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll get down to the end and everything won't add up and you'll realize you made a mistake somewhere. So it can be pretty tedious. So you got to really watch what you're doing. 
Um, but that's pretty much what a schedule of values is. And in a very, very simple way, I explained it in a very simple way. I told you what was on it. Uh, in part two, I'm going to show you exactly how to make a very basic one. It will not suffice for all general contractors, but for the most part, you're usually not going to have anything more in depth than the things I show you. Um, obviously you're going to have like to put the general contractor, you know, info in it when you send it to them, project info, um, things like that. So your information, they require different things. So just stick around for part two. I'm sure I'll have it up in the next couple of days. Just be looking forward to that. And let me know what you guys thought of this kind of short form five minute video in the comments below. Leave me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. If you have all haven't already got big plans for the channel, I'm kind of moving some things around in the background, trying to make some moves here. So hope you guys enjoyed your weekend and until next time, see ya.